want to talk a bit about the differences between Romanesque and Gothic architecture. Romanesque architecture was popular from around 1000 to 1200. In 1095, the Pope called for crusades from people in Western Europe to go on a crusade to those Middle Eastern holy lands. And as a result, Christians began to take pilgrimages to those sites, as also as well as other sites in Europe that claimed special relics. So these were typically used for pil these pilgrimage churches. And so they were housing spots and um, dining spots as well as places of worship. And they were considered Romanesque because they were Roman looking in the sense that they had the stone arches. They didn't have very many windows. There was exterior sculptures and really large interior spaces. Um, monks built and maintained these types of churches along the pilgrimage routes um, in this particular Romanesque style. Oh, sorry. This is an example of a Romanesque um, of Romanesque architecture. You see these heavy stone walls here that could support these stone barrel arches that made up the roof. So um, the fact that you could have a stone roof instead of thatch or wood really worked to prevent fires from of these churches, obviously. Um, and so you can see how large it is on the inside. And so this is typical designed to house, you know, large numbers of pilgrims who might come. So here's some of an external decoration or the carvings on the outside of a Romanesque church. And this X type of exterior sculpture was common. There wasn't much interior light in a Romanesque um, building, and so the artist decorated the outside. And they use the tympanum. This is an example of the tympanum, that semicircular space right above the portal where you would enter. Um, this was a common place to, to decorate. Um, and this particular tympanum is of Pentecost. And there are different depictions of different um, biblical uh, moments on these outside exterior services. So here we have Christ ascending to heaven and giving the church the mission to preach the word. Um, so others, you might see the last judgment, just, just different types of um, decorative exteriors. Um, many criticized these Romanesque decorations, saying people would spend more time interpreting the images than in reading the Bible itself. But that did not deter the um, the architects. Now, Gothic architecture began in the first half of the 12th century at the Abbey Church of Saint Denis in Paris, and we'll look at a picture of it. Gothic structures tended to have less mass than the Romanesque style. They had a lot of stained glass, and they were characterized by light and verticality. The decorations, like the Romanesque um, exteriors, were very unstructural. So the inside decorations, the stained windows, and as well as the exterior and interior sculptures were instructional. Um, and these Gothic cathedrals were the center of town life. So citizens were baptized, married, and buried in these cathedrals. Schooling occurred there. Ecclesiastical ecclesiastical courts of law were held in these places. The time of the day was marked by bells from the belfry. And these were very interesting economic, uh, or there were complex economic um, entities in that it took a tremendous amount of resources and time to build one of these Gothic cathedrals. They were very, very expensive. But they also served as the center of economic life. 
trade fairs, for example, would be held there. So while it was very expensive, they also brought in people from the surrounding areas to put um, funds back into the economy of the town that had the particular Gothic cathedral. So here's an example of St. Denis, the first Gothic cathedral, and you can tell um, how much differently it looks from the Romanesque style. Much more light, much more verticality, the walls are much thinner, and that is due to the supports or the flying buttresses that Gothic architects use to enable them to extend those walls up, up, up. If you look a little bit closer, you can see the ribbed vaulting of the ceiling and the stained glass. These are very typical features of Gothic architecture. A famous Gothic cathedral is Chartres, and it's 122 feet tall. It was very, very expensive to build, but in this case paid off in construction jobs. It, all, it also became a major pilgrimage site, claiming the relic of the Virgin Mary, um, specifically her clothes she wore when Jesus was born. And there were feasts here and trade fairs. So many people came to Chartres um, and the activities surrounding the cathedral. This is an example of another portal. This is the south, the south portal of Chartres. And here again, we've got Christ at the center, blessing all those who enter, and the apostles on each side. So once again, just another example of um, instruction going on in, within decoration in these Gothic cathedrals. This is an example of a rose window, and these were very common as well in Gothic architecture. Um, the rose window, many believe, represents the ideals of wholeness and coherence, and that these windows serve spiritual and instructional purposes. Typically, Christ or Mary could be at the center of the window, and often saints are depicted around the center, symbolizing paths to Christ. Other common images could be the seasons, the zodiac, the elements, depictions of virtues and vices. Some rose windows are specific in their themes. Um, for exam example, the one at Notre Dame depicts the kings and prophets of the Old Testament. Um, in Chartres, the last judgment. But the bottom line is, is that spiritually, the window invites meditation as the viewer follows the story of the window. So everything that went into Gothic architecture decoratively was also there to serve a spiritual and an instructional purpose.